Okay, today is Sunday, September 11th, and we are here to discuss Thai tours and our upcoming excursion to Ghana this December, December 13th through 22nd, 2022. I'll begin by talking a little about our company, our approach to cultural connection, exchange, and how we as a company facilitate a true immersion into a place. Um, before we start, I would just like to know who's on the call with us today. I know that I see a few new faces and some others that I have already taken to different places around the world. Um, could we just come off camera if I know ladies, you get an excuse if you weren't ready for that, I understand. <laughs> uh, can we just introduce ourselves and just say why you're interested in travel to Africa? Um, can you hear me? I can hear you. How okay. are you? This is Brother Hakeem or Brother Nkosi. Um, <clears throat> I've been interested in getting to Ghana for some time and I've seen some of your tours, so I'm very much interested. Uh, I'm trying to work around my schedule as well as my wife. Uh, she's a, a principal and sometimes a little bit harder for her uh, to get th these uh, particular time slots. Uh, but I'm, you know, wanting to find out more information. So I'm glad I could sign on today. Absolutely. Thank you for being with us. I hope that we can uh, encourage her to make it convenient. You know, you only live once. And so we <laughs> want to make it for you and your the wife. Uh, who's uh, next? Who's with us today? Uh, peace and blessings. Um, this is Leslie Howard, a.k.a. Brother Kenyatta. Uh, I'm here with my wife, Rena. Um, and uh, I've been to uh, Africa. I went to Senegal and the Gambia um, a while back, but I've always kind of promised that I would return to the motherland. And I really want to, you know, basically see as much of the continent as I can before Creator calls me to close my eyes. And I've been following Sister Kim since I met you through the Maryland Council of Elders. And I have always just admired your work and so I'm looking forward to getting more information and um, seeing um, when we could um, make this happen. I love that two different perspectives to how you guys have learned about our work one through direct tourism and the other through our work. I appreciate that so much uh, Mr. Leslie because we only do tours to regions of the world where we work all year long. So we're not a traditional tour company because we're not there in the country for the sole purpose of tourism. And so it just really makes my heart sing that you know about our work and that is how you came uh, to learn about our tours. So thank you so much. I see other folks. Okay, Miss Lisa Monique. Yes, I know Miss Lisa. Miss Lisa, could you introduce yourself and tell us uh, why you're interested in traveling to Ghana? Um, my name is Lisa uh, Watford. I am interested in traveling to Ghana. I had the um, pleasure of traveling with Thai Tours the very first time I ever went to Africa. Um, we went to Tanzania. Um, it was one of the most beautiful and challenging experiences um, that I've ever had. Um, so when I heard that Thai Tours was going to Ghana, I am very interested right now in possibly um, looking at dual citizenship, um, looking at living someplace else outside of the United States. And um, of course, Africa was definitely uh, top on my list of places that I wanted to explore. Um, and because I did get a chance to visit Tanzania, I wanted to go to Ghana um, because, of course, you know, I've heard about all the migration to Ghana and felt like, you know, I know Thai tours. They're kind of like family. So when I heard that they were going, I said, well, let me see. Maybe this might be the opportunity and um, a chance for me to jump on board. Nice. It's so nice. Uh you know, to have repeat customers, it means that we're doing something right. And it really goes beyond 
just the exchange of business. Um, so glad that you see us and some of those in our company as family, uh, because that's really how we see you. Our groups are intimate and they're small. And so it gives us an opportunity to really connect with the people that are going. Um, and so we know you, <laughs> we, and, and I, I feel confident saying that I know some of the things that agitate you. I know when you're afraid, <laughs> you know, travel, it accelerates the get to know you process <laughs> in a way that, I mean, you can live next to somebody your whole life right next door and you don't know them as well as someone that you spent two weeks with <laughs> in another country, I promise you, it's an intensified get to know you process. And thank you, Lisa, uh, for considering us again. Um, I appreciate that. And shout out to you for being one of our donors at the orphanage that you visited in Tanzania. Those young people love you, they know you by name, and they appreciate your small gifts each month. Uh, thank you again. So I'm gonna go ahead and acknowledge uh, the president of our board, Mr. Haki Ami, he is here with us today. Um, Haki, I know you're in transit doing a million things on this good Sunday morning. Um, would you like to address us? Sure, sure, yes. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Hotep, peace and blessings. Uh, Haki Ami, so it's been great uh, going to Africa with the Teaching Artists Institute. Shout out to Sister Lisa and Brother Hakeem, as well as Brother Leslie. We appreciate it, uh, you all joining this call. So uh, Ghana is very uh, strategic, both historically uh, for liberation uh, of black people and African people. And uh, I've met a lot of uh, expats uh, rather recently when I was in Ethiopia and, you know, I know, and there are a significant amount of people that travel to Ghana uh, that I've been knowing. And of course, for coming off of the year of return, uh, you know, where a very significant amount of people, I think half a million went to Ghana. Uh, we have a strategic opportunity and a mission to go there and keep the connections going uh, there. So, and, you know, being, connected to the Akan tradition for some years. I've learned a lot about the culture even before going. So, you know, I think it's a, a good time to explore Western Africa where I've never uh, been thus far. So um, yeah, at least got to do it once. Although I love working in the other places, but uh, you know, I think, you know, to connect the dots and meet all of my expat people in Ghana is going to be a great experience. So. Looking forward to, you know, possibly doing it with you all. So thank you. Absolutely. And there are over 7,000 expats living in Ghana. It's kind of a lot like Baltimore now. <laughs> I, um, I know some communities that are full of, of us. And um, even though uh, Mr. Haki will be joining us in the country for the first time, uh, Thai Tours Teaching Artists Institute, we've been working in Ghana for over 14 years now. And so our work in the region um, extends across the country. And we can't wait to show you that. Um, I'm excited to say that even though it is very late, um, our lead curator has joined us. It looks really dark in the background. Ibrima Bandingu. Um, it doesn't look like you have a microphone either. Um, I'm not sure how to help you remedy that. Let's see if I can do something on my end um, to help communicate with us. Bandingo, can you see us? Is your microphone enabled? Okay, so moral support. <laughs> We're glad that you're here. Um, I'm gonna let you figure that out. And while you do, I'm gonna begin our presentation around the company in general. Um, so if you guys give me just a moment, I'm gonna pull up our first slide. So again, Thai Tours is the name of our company and our motto, Art Tribe Trade speaks to our value system and the activities that you're engaged with while on the ground in the countries where we attend.
inside of today's presentation, we'll do a company overview, our service offerings, group vote versus solo adventure tours, which we do offer both our Thai studies and cultural exchange program in case you or someone you know is ever interested in an extended stay, Thai high, we do work with the young people as well. Some of our product offerings, artifacts, quarterly subscription, um, and then just some language around why travel is necessary and how to reach us after this presentation. So what is a Thai tour? It's a journey, true immersion into a place. Um, Thai is true immersion into a place because many tour companies, they curate experiences where you are separated from the people intentionally, especially in regions where between the haves and the have nots. Uh, we find unique ways to weave in and out of each class and community, and we show you beauty in each. Um, here in the US, we have the illusion um, of the middle class, right? The working poor. Um, and so it's not as evident uh, those that do or do not um, have access to upward mobility. Um, but in developing countries, um, it's very apparent. Um, however, a Thai tour is, again, true immersion into a place. It's a journey. Um, and so we want you to experience holistically the region in which you're attending. So you'll see the streets and the suites, <laughs> everything in between. So the Teacher Artist Institute offers a unique artist-led travel experience that allows those who embark authentic exchanges with people of the world. And so the reason that we're unique is because it's artist-led. You see your journey through the lens, the artistic lens. So we're gonna continue, keep it moving. Uh, not a lot of information. I still want to hear from you guys. Um, so customized itineraries, knowledgeable artist guides, flexible schedules, uh, even though we have tours that are curated during uh, regions, uh, during time periods around the year, uh, we still want you to know that we're willing to work with your schedule. Maybe December 13th through the 22nd doesn't work. Um, maybe you need to plan something that's individualized for you and your family, and we can help you with that as well. So our itinerary categories for us in the Teaching Artists Institute, art is holistic. It's simply creation, um, co-creation. It's not just music, I sing. It's not the visual arts, but it's food the culinary arts. We love to use the culinary arts to better show you a region. Food is a common denominator, nature, of course, but we're not just there for nature. We're also there for uh, history and traditional art. Uh, we'll show you a little nightlife. Uh, sometimes we do layovers in other countries and we give you a chance to show you two worlds in one tour. Wellness and leisure is also a coherent theme through each one of our tours. We want you to take a break from the fast pace of what it means to be a workaholic in America, uh, what it means to not value uh, the need for travel, um, taking a break from your own worldview. And so that's wellness and leisure. Of course, sports and recreation, mostly on the beach, <laughs> for those of you that like the water, that um, appreciate that, and networking and investments, for those of you that are in the country for a little bit more than just vacation. So. so what is the difference between our company and any other tour company that offers this excursion to Ghana? Well, our secret is our curators. Um, Thai Tours is your inside connect to the Pan-African world. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we do tours, but we're not exclusively a tourism company. Our organization, the parent company, Teaching Artists Institute, we use art as a tool for community development. We call that art for social transformation. Our goal is to connect artists and art culture to sustainable development. And we currently do that in seven countries around the world. And that army of teaching artists, of culture keepers, of those that wanna promote and preserve the African identity in all its forms, from the culinary arts, to drumming, to architecture, uh, to the agriculture, uh, the things that 
we sometimes miss in our symbolic landscape here at home because it just kind of blends in and we take for granted those that are still vested in the symbolic landscape of the continent. Uh, we have them, they're, they're a part of our Thai family. And we do this in seven countries around the world and the network is even larger. And so our secret is our curators. Our curators are the teaching artists that we work with all year long, helping them to build their projects, helping them to understand that it's bigger than the art part, helping them to understand that art is everything. A global network of Pan-African teaching artists have been trained to curate experiences inspired by their unique art forms and local environments. So eat in the kitchens of Cuba, climb to the top of Kilimanjaro like Miss Lisa, she made it. Learn to dance with rhythm people, um, compete with Gucci and stain your own leather and fez. That's in Morocco. Uh, they also do a lot of indigo dyeing in Ghana. Uh, the art of possibility is endless. So we give you access, exclusivity and quality assurance. And you can see pictured some of our fellows, um, our curators around the frame of this slide. And Raz Bendingo, are you with us? Is your microphone working yet? Uh, poor baby. I don't see it here on the screen. So we're gonna keep going. But our curators um, are, uh, they are plugged into the regions where we go in intimate ways. And they're not just there to say, hey, look at the, Elmina slave dungeons, uh, aren't, isn't that sad? They're not just here to say, hey, uh, this is the club, you know, go inside and have fun. They're artists. So they curate activities at these locations that you could only get if you were with them. So maybe after we go into the slave dungeons, you need to deal with what just happened in a way that is artistic and art therapeutic. And so we take you onto that shoreline and we paint the future to decide that this history will never repeat itself. And this is why. Just an example of how we utilize our curators um, to create experiences that are unique to the regions that we visit. And that is the difference. That is the tie tour uh, difference. And we're always excited to add new curators. They're new artists adding our vision and movement every year. And so, uh, Raz Bandingo, he's from Wa. Wa is the Upper West region of Ghana. And we'll talk about why that region is unique um, when we get to where we're going in Ghana this year. So we have all different types of travelers by age, interest, and budget. Um, a lot of our student groups, uh, they travel together because uh, they're okay with sharing and all kinds of dormitory ways. We try to find uh, ways to cut costs. And um, some people say, listen, I don't want the kids. I only want to travel with my age group. But usually it's by interest. People find commonalities in the country. They're interested in certain topics. And so uh, we find that group travel um, is our most popular option. Thai Tours offers seasonal journeys for groups of eight or more with discounted packages to major events we partner to curate across Pan-Africa. Life is better with company. So this picture is from 2019. I tried to zoom in, not sure if that happened on your end, but we love testimonials. We love social media. And this testimonial is from a guy named Camp Cleveland. Uh, he is in front of the Manhia Palace in Kumasi, the Ashanti region of Ghana. And he said, my experience traveling with Thai tours was amazing. I have been around the world, but my trip to Ghana was one of the best. The team really took care of me and my family while we were in Ghana for the year of return in 2019. I will definitely make plans to join in to join her and her crew in Uganda and Tanzania 2020, professional and down to earth. That always makes my heart smile. Thank you so much, Camp Cleveland. Um, shared costs, traveling alone and you wanna save, allow Thai tours to tie up and tie you with a group of your interests. So even if you don't have a roommate, even if you do wanna travel alone, that's okay. We can partner you with someone else in the group that is traveling alone and they can be your roommate to help you save costs. I mentioned in this slide that uh, we do journeys, seasonal journeys to curated 
Pan-African events. And so what does that mean? That means that we're not just taking you into the country to the tourist circuit. Most people that travel to Ghana, they go to Accra, which is the capital. They go to Cape Coast to see the slave dungeons. And if they're lucky, they make it to Kumasi. We call that in tourism, the triangle. But because we work in the country all year long with an army of artists that are integrated into the symbolic landscape, we're able to take you off the beaten path in intimate ways to places where the average tour company uh, can access. And they can access, it's inaccessible because they don't know the people. In order for you to go to Balatanga, you need to know the people. In order for you to go to Wa, you have to know the people. And the same with the Volta region, et cetera. Um, some of those exclusive events I'll talk about when we uh, talk about some of the places that we'll be going this year while on the ground. There are even events that local Ghanaians aren't invited to. Uh, you need an invitation to be there. Um, so let's keep moving. Benefits. So if you decide that you do want to travel alone, there are some benefits. You can be on your own time, on your own schedule. This young lady, Kalita Armstrong, said, I'm back on U.S. soil, not sure how happy I am. Cuba was amazing. And so she was on her own schedule, and we enjoyed facilitating her itinerary through uh, Santiago in the South. Uh, so you receive 24-7 customer support. Uh, our team is on call throughout your journey to ensure you are safe and enriched. Um, and those individualized itineraries that I mentioned before, we just allow you to partner with us to create and self-design your journey. And you feature this boutique gotta be on a list event. So what does that mean? That means we can put you on the list of events that people don't even know are happening. Um, gonna keep going. Next slide. So, of course, a few photos from those that have participated in solo trips, group trips, and do it yourself. Ibrima, it looks like you have finally raised your hand and gotten your microphone. Work. No, I don't see a microphone, Ibrima. I'm sorry. I do see that your video is now working and that you've raised your hand, but I still don't see a microphone next to um, next to your icon. I hope that we can figure that out before the call is, before we finish. But until then. He said he got a bad connection. A bad connection. Sorry about that. Um, I hope that we can make it work before uh, we're finished here this evening. So for those that don't know, our company, um, we also provide opportunities under our Thai Studies and Cultural Exchange uh, for high school students. We always talk about this because you may know a high school student that needs this experience. Um, I talk with some of my friends that have migrated here voluntarily to the continent or to the U.S. and um, because their young people grow up here, you know, they're, they're embracing Black culture and some of the maladies that come along with that and some of the oppression from the system that doesn't know the difference between a child that I would have and a child that was birthed from the continent. And so what they're doing is they're sending their young people back home. They're like, oh my God, you're going crazy. You're too American now. I'm sending you back home to Liberia or I'm sending you back home to Nigeria to boarding school. I've heard all types of scenarios and stories. And I ask myself uh, when it comes to young people that are born and raised here from our own ethnicity, from our own tribe, African-Americans, where do we send our young people back to uh, when they need a break? from this society and the maladies and the pitfalls that are so um, prevalent, so, um, so many everywhere, so many opportunities to get caught up. Um, they're being promoted in the media. And so Thai High was created um, to be a part of the solution. It provides African high school students living in the diaspora with opportunities to use expeditionary learning, language studies, and artistic expression as a tool for leadership development and self-discovery. 
by offering summer learning, study abroad, and gap year cultural exchanges around the world, African high school students lay a strong foundation for futures in college, entrepreneurship, and healthy community engagement. And so this is our commercial break. <laughs> if you know a young person um, that would benefit from one of our um, cultural exchange programs or the Thai High in general, please let us know. Um, maybe it's not in Ghana this December with you, uh, but perhaps in the future, please keep us in mind. So our commercial break is over. <laughs> We're gonna keep going. Um, I've mentioned Thai studies and cultural exchange, which Taha is underneath of, but that also refers to you. If you're looking to study abroad, it's never too late. Learning is a lifelong process, or maybe you're already an expert and you wanna be on a speaker's bureau. Um, we have events like our annual conference in November. Um, this year, it will be in Kenya. Our conference is every November. And maybe you're an expert and you want to come and speak and share uh, your work through an artistic lens. We would love for you to join us. We facilitate homestays. Maybe you want to learn more about the African worldview uh, through the lens of home life. Research, field study, internships, teaching jobs. Maybe you need to live in the area, but also get a small stipend while you're there to supplement your income and also portfolio development. So all of this is available in Thai Tours. Um, we'll keep going, 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 going. So we also have lots of products. Um, not everybody will go to Africa. What Lisa can tell you is that now that she has gone to Tanzania, she is in the 1% of people that have actually gone. You're now the expert in the room um, and people are living vicariously through you. Um, but it doesn't mean they can't get a taste of the region. And so we have products uh, that will give them a taste. Um, when I first started going to the continent in the early 2000s, I would have all my friends and family, bring me back a dress, some fabric. Hmm. Bring me back some, I don't know, all kinds, you rise what people have up their sleeves and what they've seen on YouTube. And so years later in our, um, our company, I said we would create a subscription box that we would highlight the regions uh, of the continent where we visit and four times a year, we can ship Africa to your front door. So you'll get a taste of the region, spices, fabrics, books, um, cashew nuts, um, sometimes indigo vat dye, uh, all types of things that we find unique finds on the ground. And so even if your family and friends aren't able to join you, you can still through our company sign them up for a subscription box. Uh, we also have our Artifacts magazine. This year will be our first edition. And who knows, maybe you'll be one of those featured and your experience uh, can live on through our publication. And so if that's you, even if you decide that you're unable to go with us to Ghana this year, maybe you can still sign up for our, our subscription box, Taste of the Region. So here's some of the reasons that people decide not to go. Um, they have bills. Let's just be honest. You could make a lot of money in the US and those bills just never seem to go away. The more money you make, the higher your bills are. And guess what? Those bills will be right there when you get back. Um, we hear people say, oh, let's just go to Vegas. Let's just do the Bahamas. But the truth is you will spend just as much in Vegas and the Bahamas as you would in say Italy or Ghana. When you uh, go down to everything you're going to buy to wear, the money you're going to spend on the ground when you get there, all-inclusive is the way. And our tour package to Ghana this year and every other group tour that we do is always all-inclusive. And we'll talk about what all-inclusive means. Another uh, little Thai talk 101, travel to Africa is a luxury. Maybe it is for some, but for us here on this call today, Black people, it's a birthright. It is our right to be able to return to the land of our ancestors and repatriate at least once, um, hopefully twice. Hey, I say visit each country once and do it with Thai tours, of course. <laughs> um, and then stop buying Jordans. 
and start buying experiences. And Jordans aren't necessarily tennis shoes and tie talk. Jordans are all of those material things that we continue to buy. All of the cars that we collect like toys, all of the dresses, all of the things that depreciate in value. This is an experience that will never get old. You will tell this experience to your grandkids and their kids about this time when I repatriated to the land of my ancestors. In the Teaching Artists Institute, we say that culture is the new currency. And it is. It's because we understand true value. That's why this is the motto of our organization. Um, next up, Thai Tour Ambassadors. Um, so we're always looking for Thai Tour Ambassadors. Uh, the Thai Tours Ambassadors program is designed to promote travel education to communities that have limited exposure to the logistics of international travel and access to travel funding. And so this program is holistic because we're willing to work with anybody. Um, as long as you have the willingness, you don't need a passport. If you have a passport, even if you don't, we'll help you get that. If you've never had to get a visa, we'll help you walk through the visa process. Don't worry. <laughs> if you're afraid to get on a plane, we'll talk you down. <laughs> um, but the truth is, is uh, many people don't have access to this because it wasn't taught to them. And there is a steep learning curve we're willing to help you go through that. It's also an incentive to help you market our brand um, to the communities that you are influential in. Um, if you're able to successfully sell tours, then we give you a cheaper price, a cheaper price, um, every ambassador. So our tie tour to Ghana this year is $4,500. That includes your round trip flight from the US into Ghana. That also includes three flights within the country. We don't keep you within the triangle. You're going up to the Upper West. You're going up to the Upper East. So you need to fly to do that. Um, it includes two meals per day. Um, you're responsible for at least one, as well as entrance into all of the activities that we do on the ground. And so we have one more slide here. I'm going to pull that up. Um, and this is just the phrase that we just, you know, include because we love so much. We make real travel easy. The art of travel is meant to help you see outside yourself in order to see your reflection more clearly. And the reason that quote is so important to us is because we think that we're going into another country to learn about those people and to learn about that location. And it's true. You do learn a bit. But ultimately, what you learn more about is yourself, um, who you are. And I think the irony of that is something that you should prepare people for in advance. <laughs> We've had so many people um, experience culture shock. And so we help you manage that. Every tour that we do includes a Thai tour preparation series four workshops leading up to our departure date that teaches you everything about how to be healthy abroad, what to pack, travel insurance, um, how to prepare your family for your experience. And it begins with a send off that we do virtually and it ends with a homecoming. And that's once you return. And a homecoming is an opportunity for two things. One, for you to share your experience with the community of people you love. We also have the opportunity to share our marketing materials and our brand. We bring the food of the region you went to. We bring the wares and uh, we give people a taste of the region and you help us do that with the homecoming. And so the experience continues even after um, you have left the country. So now I wanna talk a little about Ghana. I'm gonna check in with our curator and see if he is able to Oh, he's gone completely now. Okay. Um, well, that's unfortunate. Uh, Raz Bandingo, I'll begin by giving him a little introduction. You'll have three curators while on the ground. Typically we have two, but the reason you'll have three is because one of them is a really, um, I'll say highly situated um, manager in the government and they're not able to travel with us throughout the country. Um, they're a little bit of a surprise, but they are helping to curate experiences just for us 
to participate in, to give you an inside look um, at Ghana and uh, the beauty of the country's people. So Raz Bandingo, who just left us, he's a performing artist from Upper Wa, from the region of Wachau. So I'm gonna pull up the calendar now. Give me one second. Okay, I hope you guys can see that. So we're using this as a mock template uh, to talk and guide you through what'll be happening while we're on the ground in Ghana. So our journey begins on December 13th. Uh, when we first arrive, our first destination of course will be Kumasi. In Kumasi in the Ashanti region, this is the height of Ghana's prominence and cultural preservation. Um, the Ashanti Hine, Hine means king, is still sitting on his throne today as he did in the early 15, 16, and 1700s. Uh, the Ashanti king, um, he shares the throne with the advisory of the queen mother that is there by his side, not his wife, but usually his sister or his auntie. And this dynamic is really important for us to explain um, culturally, because from the diaspora perspective, the king always leads with his queen, which is his wife. And I love the balance found in Ghana, where the king shares advisory of the tribe with his auntie, which is usually a little older, a little more experienced and she has just as much influence in the society and Ghana has many queen mothers across the country and you will have the pleasure of being with all of them. So we will uh, land in Accra and immediately we will be transported to Kumasi, which in our opinion as a company is the cultural epic center of Ghana. From Kumasi and the Manhia Palace, we will journey to Bonri. Bonri is an extension of the Ashanti kingdom. Our curator in Bonri will be Dominic Marfo. Dominic has lived in the Bonri village and his family, uh, they're a family of weavers. They use huge looms and their toes on both sides to weave one strand at a time, beautiful woven tapestries that speak the Indinkra language. The Indinkra is a sacred language of symbols and symbolic um, symbols of the Ashanti people. Um, the language of the uh, Adinkra, it predates many of the Francophone, Anglophone, and even the, the Fila, uh, Fila languages uh, that are their origins. Each symbol has a meaning. You'll learn about the meaning. You'll have the opportunity to make the dye. Uh, that is the product of a boiled down tree bark. Um, you'll have the opportunity to stamp the Indinkra symbols that speak most to you on the fabrics that have been made specifically for you. And Dominic Marfo will lead that process. At that time, we'll head back down to Accra because we are invited to a very special dinner with His Excellency. Um, and so in Accra, there are many activities to see. Um, some of our connection to Ghana in the sixth region, which is what we're called here in the diaspora, is through W.E.B. Du Bois. Kwame Nkrumah, the first president of Ghana after emancipation from colonization, he said, I'm not African because I was born in Africa. I'm African because Africa was born in me. And he laid the, the foundation using the black star as his guide, um, inspired by Harriet Tubman, who used the star to find her way to freedom. He laid a foundation and opened the door wide for the diaspora to come back home. And W.E.B. Du Bois, he did just that. And while in Accra, we will visit his final resting place. 
as well as other beautiful gardens, et cetera, in the area. We'll also meet with many of the diaspora that are currently living in Ghana because they've repatriated and they'll tell you about their personal experience firsthand. But before we leave Accra, the capital, we are gonna sit in the presence of His Excellency, um, Nana uh, Ado Akofu, who's the current president, um, I am going to take a break from being a part of your delegation and I'm going to sing a few songs on stage under Kimpool Music. So we've been invited and we have our own little table and section. After that, on the 17th, we'll get on our flight to the upper west region of Wa. I'm so sorry that Ibrima is not able to be here with us to talk for himself about what they call the Hippo City, Wachao. In Wachao, you'll do many activities. First and foremost, you're gonna get on canoe boats. And these canoes are gonna take you down the Black Volta, where the hippos still live. There's an incredible story uh, from the Black Volta during the enslavement. Uh, the local people remember um, colonization and they remember uh, when people from what they call the, um, they call them the, the Bango, I'm trying to think of what they call Europeans that came to and capture, to enslave them. They remember those experiences and they pass them down with the griot style tradition, the oral tradition. And they said that when they came for Wachao, the hippo city, that the reason that they were able to escape the clutches of the Europeans is because they rode the backs of the hippos. And when the Europeans attempted to follow behind them, assuming that those mounds in the river were rocks, the hippos moved and they all drowned. And I just love that story because that's the type of folklore that gives you um, the strength in your identity that makes you proud of who you are. Uh, and, and so we wanna promote those stories that keep the pride of the Ghanaian people intact. Um, so from Wakao, we'll go to the sacred region in the upper west called Senkanu. Senkanu in that region will be led by the chief Bernard Morna. And Bernard Morna, he sits um, as the chief, um, the grandson of a great chief. And there we'll have a small hike to the top of a mountain that served as a fortress during uh, the attacks of the colonizer. And Sekanu, it in the Upper West region was like a, a citadel. It was in leadership in many of the other surrounding regions. They came to Sekanu and they organized a militia to fight back against the colonizers invasions and they won. We have so many stories when we go to Ghana that tell us about how we arrived here and we never really hear the stories about what happened to those that were left behind and how they felt about those that were taken and those fronts where the colonizers came and they lost. They didn't win on every front in every village across the region. And so we also pride ourselves on telling you those stories and uncovering that history. From Senkano, we'll go in the Upper West region to a very fancy dinner. Ibrima, if he was on the line, he'd tell you more about that. He's going to perform with us. He's going to do uh, drumming and dancing in the traditional forms of the Upper West region. We're inviting Balatenga to join us. We're bringing sand to the beach. We don't have enough time to go to the east border, but we're bringing the eastern border to us. And so Shanky Bongo, he's coming to show you his, what they call obu, as strong as a stone. Uh, dance movement and uh, hip hop. They tell us in the diaspora, we have no culture, but we continually, as we leave the shores of the US, see the influence of our culture around the world, especially for me, us musicians. We see it all the time, jazz and the blues and R&B and hip hop, especially. They love it. And um, so it reminds us that we too have a culture, even though we're learning about others and it has influenced the world. And so after our big fancy dinner where we meet the chief, we will actually visit the house of the chiefs. They have a house of the chiefs in Wa. And so we'll sit at their feet and we'll talk to them um, with their translators, of course, and they'll uh, bless us and send us on our journey. And before we leave, not least, uh, what was last but not least, we will visit Almina and the slave dungeons that dot 
the Cape Coast or the Gold Coast. And we'll talk about how we were the gold that was taken from the Gold Coast and what a blessing that we're now back and returned. And I'll allow you to take that journey home with you um, to meditate on what that means and how you plan to continue the journey of repatriating in your mind and in your heart. It's continual and it lasts forever. And so uh, we're here today to answer any questions that you may have about our journey in December this uh, 13th through the 22nd. Um, I do know that uh, Thai Tours is an opportunity to connect with people of the world in an authentic way. Um, the curators that you meet, we've been knowing them for over 10 years. We are vested in the regions where we take you. And so we're able to protect you from some of the haggling, some of the feeling used. When you first come to Africa as a soloist, like I did so many moons ago, I felt like all they saw was dollar signs. <laughs> it's like, listen, sis, I understand you're as black as me, but you have dollars. <laughs> and some of that is still true. Um, but now that we have done the hard work of building authentic relationships with the people we work with on the ground, first of all, some of them have a lot more money than I do. <laughs> Second of all, um, we're like family now. And um, that's a beautiful thing to feel. And I hope that we can share our family with you um, on a Thai tour. Um, so if after this conversation, you're interested in receiving an application, we'll allow you to do that. We'll set you up on a payment plan if you need that, and we'll continue from there on a one-on-one -on -one basis. But before we do, I want to open the line for questions, give you an opportunity uh, just to ask anything you're thinking. Um, or if you have a comment and you just have something you want to get off your chest, <laughs> well, let's hear it. Anybody? Um, I have a question. Um, what has been your experience with, let's say, the Ghanaians feeling that we're not authentic Africans? Uh, so I understand that term Obroni or Bruni is not only for uh, European Americans, but uh, in some cases us. But I want to hear from your experience. Have you seen that? Well, what I will say is this. Um, tribalism on the continent is real. Um, it's the reason that colonization worked okay. because people to divide and conquer. And a lot of that tribalized, trib tribalism is still exists today. If you go into Accra, you see that, I mean, it's a big city now, but the original people of Accra were the Wa. And I mean, sorry, not Wa, I'm still thinking of Upper West, the Ga, G-A. And those people, they don't feel, if you ask them how they feel about the Ashanti, they don't take kindly to the Ashanti. Everybody's Ghanaian on the surface, but just beneath the surface, when we scratch just beneath the surface, you'll see that a lot of the tribalistic um, opinions that brought people to where they could be colonized still exist today. And so make no mistake about it, you have your own tribe, <laughs> so it's okay. You are a part of your ethnicity, you're a part of your tribe, and we're just one of the tribes at the table. And so Pan-Africanism was developed in the diaspora. So in some ways we have to take leadership and we have to be an example of the unified front. The idea that global African unity and solidarity is, is possible, even if it isn't our past because it never truly existed, is it possible for our future? Is it necessary for our future? And so we are at that table, we are at the helm of that agenda. And so that is a part of what we're bringing back to Ghana when we come, every time we come. Okay. Did that answer the question? I think so. <laughs> okay, well, it's not too late. <laughs> you can, you know, speak now. I have, well, other, I have other questions and I don't wanna monopolize. Um, the discussion, uh, but I've heard si you know stories on both sides of that, and uh, I've even been to the Ghanaian embassy in D.C. 
and talked to some of the, the staff there that were uh, GA, and they insisted on uh, calling me uh, an American. I told them, I said, that's an insult to me to call me an American. I'm just as much African as you are. And if you insist on calling me a, a, an American, I'm going to show you what we in America do when we insult it. I'll take you outside and 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 and, and lay hands on you. And they said, wait a minute, wait a minute, we 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 got security. I said, I don't care about your security. You in DC. I got cousins. We roll deep in DC. Okay. So then the brother said, you know, here, here again. He said, wait a minute, bro, wait a minute. I can look at your face, your structure. You look sort of God. I said, now I'm God because now I'm getting angry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what I'll say is this, um, they are doing to us what was done to them. Mm -hmm. So you are experiencing the symptoms of a malady, um, that goes so much deeper than the surface examples in behavior. Okay. And perhaps on the ground in Ghana, we need a real panel discussion about that. And that can be arranged because they're pan-African nationalists in Ghana of African descent that'll have this conversation with you. And they've studied um, our historians. They've studied our scholars as well as their own. And this is what guides them. And those are the Ghanaians that you need to contact and connect with. And they're far and few between. And so. That was leads into a nice segue to my next question. I promise I won't ask any more right away. Um, doc, uh, will we see or have an opportunity to have any discussion at all with Dr. Obadeli uh, Kabon? So we don't work with our tabus. Most of the Pan-Africans that we work with in Ghana are from Ghana. But okay. there will be an opportunity while in Accra for you to have uh, a connection with repatriates that have lived uh, for many years. For example, some of my mentors, Mr. Albi and Ms. Rose, uh, they run the International Study of at the university. Um, you may be familiar with uh, Legun. Kim, we lost your microphone. Yes, and so Mr. Albi and Ms. Rose, they raised their children there. They've been there over 40 years. And these are some of the elders that I began working with when I first started to work in Ghana. And so we will have dinner with them and meet some of the other repatriates that have been a part of the African American Association in Ghana. Um, and so you'll have an opportunity to ask them many questions about what it's like to live in Ghana as a repatriate of African American descent. Question. Did that answer your question? Hi, Kim. Yes. Nice. Okay. Um, question, more questions, there has to be. Um, I have a uh, question. What are the accommodations like? So you stay in everything from the streets to the suites, <laughs> not outside. <laughs> what I will say is this, um, you will experience Ghanaian life holistically. So you will, stay in accommodations where this is the top of what Ghana has to offer, like the golden tulip. Um, this is one of the examples of Ghana's most premier uh, accommodations. Um, but you'll also stay in a village setting for one night. And it's not because this is not a hotel and it's not because you won't be comfortable, but it isn't a city. Everything around you, <laughs> except for the building that you're in, will remind you of the village life. And I think it's important for you to experience both because we're not just tourists, we're on a journey and we want you to connect with people from all classes. And so you have to go to them. And so are you gonna sleep on any dirt floors? No. <laughs> Will it always be a hotel accommodation? Yes, but the locations and the scenery around the hotel will change. Does that make sense? Does that answer your question? Sure. Um... In, in traveling um, to Africa, like you say, uh, um, sometimes the local people would see you as a dollar sign. And so the question becomes, um, how do you deal with the security? You know, because um, I know I did have some experience where people would like just 
you know, kind of bum rush you and, you know, try to um, take whatever you had, you know, like um, if you had tennis shoes or something like that, if you left off the hotel property per se, they would warn you that, you know, their security couldn't be responsible for you. And um, you could, you know, as a, as a tourist, you could be wrong. So what I'll say is this, first and foremost, when you go to Africa, you're not a tourist. And one of the biggest reasons is because in most situations, if you just be quiet, nobody knows that you're not Ghanaian. They may look at you and say, oh, you're fresh. But what they're thinking is that you're from Ghana and you just moved abroad and now you're home to visit. So what does that mean? During our Thai tour preparation series, which is four workshops leading up to our departure, we teach you about how to be security minded. Some of the habits we have here in Baltimore City, you probably are already hip to some of what you need. Don't go to the ATM and spread your money like a fan <laughs> and walk with it to the van before you put it into your bag. Um, you can usually card the card. Um, in most locations across Ghana, um, until you go off the beaten path, you can use your visa just like you can anywhere else. I'm just trying to talk about things that would make you a target. Meanwhile, our curators are prepared. They're also security minded. They've been trained and they're well aware of the risk and how to defend you against those risks. So I would say a part of our responsibility as a company is to ensure your safety and we're well prepared and equipped to do that. Does that make sense? Yes. Nice. But you, uh, Baltimore City native, I don't think you'll have any problems <laughs> at all. <laughs> no, I didn't the last time I went to the continent, but I know uh, the reality is it's like so you like if you come there that it's American and once they realize that you're an American, you know, they sometimes view you as an ATM machine and people will just bum brush you, you know, like and either try to sell you things that you're not interested in or um, people were, were, were actually begging in the street and, you know, like kind of pulling on you to, you know, just give them, you know, whatever, you know, they were able to coax from you, that sort of thing. So I, um, I do know what you're referring to. And what I will say is that Ghana is one of the most humble countries on the West African coast. So you won't find that um, in Ghana specifically. What I'll also say is that that is a concern in the village areas, but they are, what would you call them? Um, terrorist sects. So you find the terrorist sects in locations like Nigeria, you have the Boko Haram, um, and these things are published on the U.S. Department, um, you know, on their site, some of the terrorist sects. Um, and so Ghana is not one of the regions with these types of concern. We'll send you information and literature to reassure yourself. And ultimately, um, what we can uh, just hope is that you can trust in us as a company uh, to be security minded and to ensure that you are safe and have an enjoyable time. Kim, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so um, I want to speak to, since I've traveled with Todd Tours um, before, and I want to speak to that. There were definitely moments when we were in Tanzania where we had that experience for sure. But I think what gave me some assurance, like you said, I mean, you, 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 you got, you know, how, you have to know how to move over here. You know, just like you need to know how to move anywhere that you, you know, that you go. Um, and you need to be, you know, security minded. But I felt because you and because you have such a connection with the continent, because you are um, not that you have, you know, you you're well when you when when you travel with Kim, you'll see that they have these relationships with the people in Tanzania. So there was a sense of security that I felt from that, if that makes sense. Like you all were not strangers there. Does that make sense what I'm saying, Kim? Oh, absolutely. I understand. I mean, there's a difference between like um, how you carry yourself. I remember there was a group of tourists 
that were very uh, disrespectful of the locals. And, um, you know, like um, they acted very privileged. And right. it, 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 it just, it, it galled me, you know, like that they didn't recognize they were in somebody else's home. And right. Like, and see, Kim and them have, Todd Torres has relationship with people on the ground. Yeah. So they're not unfamiliar with where, you know, when you, once you begin to see that, it kind of makes you, it gave me some sense of, you know, um, well, plus I know how to carry myself as well, but it also gave me because like she said, they're not just there on, on a tourist platform. They're, they're integrating, they're immersing themselves in, you know, the diaspora, they have relationships with people there. So that gave me more of a sense of security, if I'm making sense. I understand you, sister. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Lisa, for um, talking from personal experience. Um, I appreciate that testimonial. And it's true. We're not going to regions where we're only in the country to do a tour. We're taking you to see the icing on the cake. We're taking you to see what we've built. And a part of what we've built are those longstanding relationships. And so we're not taking you onto the tourist uh, triangle, even though we'll take you to a few locations where the tourists go, we're taking you to the architects of Ghana, people that curograph the nightlife. These are, you know, Ghana's uh, best and brightest, those that are entrenched into the environment. And so I just hope that um, you'll get a chance to see for yourself. Um, are there any more questions? Uh, yeah, what about the monetary exchange? So right now, unfortunately, um, I'm sorry, hold on one second. Okay. Yes. Um, so the CD, unfortunately, is not doing so well right now. Let's just say you won't have any problems on the ground <laughs> when you get there. Um, inside of your application booklet will be a page that tells you about currency exchange. It'll also tell you about health options on the ground, um, you know, what the healthcare facilities are like should emergencies arise. We also talk about um, inside of the application, we talk about who you would like your roommate to be, um, smoker, non-smoker, et cetera. And so you'll see a lot of those questions answered uh, in the application booklet. Hey, Kim, my question is, if you do decide to go um, solo, if you don't have a roommate, how does that impact your cost? So if you want a single room, then that's an additional $500. If not, we will assign you a roommate. Okay. Okay, so the total would be, instead of 4,500, it would be 5,000. Am I understanding that correctly? For a single room, yes. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? And so for a couple, that's $9,000? Yes. Any more questions? Um, Kim, you were just in uh, Egypt, uh, Kemet, uh, I guess what, two weeks ago? Uh, <laughs> not even two weeks. Okay. <laughs> um, about five days. <laughs> yes. Okay. And you did me a tremendous favor because I had to prove, oh my God. <laughs> I'll lose you. Say again. I'm still I'll here. Somehow I, I lost your screen, but that, I, I think I hit the button. But um, I appreciate what you did for me was I was trying to prove a point to someone who said that the, uh, the uh, three pyramids in Giza are no longer there, <laughs> if you can believe that. Um, and I think you had mentioned that there was a possibility with the Ghana, uh, the Ghana trip that we would have a short layover in Egypt. And I was wondering how that would work out. Yes, so uh, essentially we will be adding uh, a 20, maybe 18 hour layover on our flight 
I'm in the country of Egypt in Cairo. And so that's what happens when you take Egypt air. And I can't wait for you guys to get the experience of having two countries in one. Okay, so that is going to take place for the December trip. Because that took me a, a nice hook. If I could just yes. get to Okay. <laughs> yeah, can, yes. can you elaborate yes. on that a little bit, please? Um, so uh, when you take Egypt air, you have to do a layover in Cairo. And the layover is long enough for you to go and see the pyramids at Giza Strip. Oh, and sure that see, you're Kim, able to that. How could you leave that part out? <laughs> for real, for real. Yes. <laughs> I mean, come on. All right. But I'm happy. You put a smile on my face, okay? <laughs> yes, it's like two trips in one. Um, we love layovers. So it's a similar deal to um, when we were in Amsterdam, Kim? Yes, exactly. So when you went to Tanzania, we stayed for, um, well, we stayed overnight, but we would only be there in Egypt for about 18 hours. And it okay. gives us an opportunity to see a little bit of Egypt. So okay. we'd be running around from this place to that place, but we could get it in. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yep. And my, I do have a question about, um, you know, us taking flights while we're in um, while we are in Ghana, is it going to be that, are we going to be running with horses like we were in Tanzania? <laughs> well, the thing is that um, in Ghana, the luggage allotment is a little more. Um, okay. At the same time, um, you don't have such a long distance. So okay. I would say no. Yeah, okay. I would say no. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, thank you. One other question. Yes. I'm, a, I'm a beach person. Do we get to Labadi Beach? Um, so that may not be the beach where we go to, but we will go to the water. Okay. So you got to give me to a beach at some point. <laughs> you will definitely go to the beach. Okay. I got two wishes. Okay. You got me for the beach and whomever is going to be our like tour guide with you, they know the, food, the best food spots. Hakeem, oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Food is our love language. Okay. <laughs> so my love you, language. See, yeah. Get off this this call right now. I'm rushing to my African restaurant right now, so I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, she'll get your red red. You'll get your red snapper fish. I don't know if you love seafood, but I love fish yeah. and some of the best in Almina on the coast. Can you okay. drink the water? Well. You don't drink the water, but during our Thai tour preparation series, you will find that you can drink the water inside of a coconut. So when you stay at the Coconut Grove Beach Resort um, in Almina, you'll drink coconut water until you can't drink anymore. You can eat fruit with a hard outer cover like pineapples and plantain or banana. And most of the water in Ghana is bottled. But we'll talk about all that during the tie to a preparation series. Don't worry, we'll make sure that you're safe. And I can vouch for the, I can vouch that we has we went to some amazing. I mean, I don't know if you have the same kind of restaurants, but we had some amazing experiences when it came to you know, places to eat. Like we went out to a restaurant that was all the way out in the Indian Ocean that we had to catch a boat to. I think we did that twice, right, Kim? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. one was the restaurant, one was the island. And right. So, yeah, that was great. Actually. That was awesome. <laughs> My favorite. <laughs> okay, family. So, if there are no more questions, we do have to go. We have a group going to Tanzania in October, and so they are patiently waiting. I'm so excited that you guys are coming with us to Ghana. I'm going to go ahead and speak it into existence, <laughs> and I will send you all the applications. I look forward to following up with each of you. All right. Thank you, Kim. All right. Good night. Good night.